Hey everyone, so I've already made a tutorial that covers camera solving in After Effects, and if you haven't seen it yet, you can watch it somewhere up here. But I haven't covered actual motion tracking inside of After Effects, meaning if the, the camera's stationary and maybe a, a plane is flying by and you wanna track the data of that plane, or the camera's moving but maybe there's a, a leaf or a tree blowing in the wind and you wanna track that specific data. This takes us away from camera solving and into motion tracking. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk all about motion tracking in After Effects, and then how to apply that motion tracking data to things like null objects and shape layers. Let's get started right after this. Now this is a shot that I filmed in my front yard last time it was raining. I filmed this in slow motion on my Panasonic GH5. Now there's two movements happening here. There's the main movement of my camera, it's kind of traversing down and to the right, and then there's the movement of this white flower petal as the raindrops from my roof are hitting it. So I'm not going to be tracking the camera like we did in the previous tutorials. Instead, I want to track the motion of this pedal. So to do this, I'm going to have my track flower layer selected. And in my tracker panel, I'm going to choose track motion. When I click track motion, two things happen. First, it opens it up in our layer tab. Second, it creates what's called track point one. Now let's talk about what track point one is and how trackers work inside of After Effects. Trackers need areas of high contrast to track well. Meaning if I were to sit here and drag this tracker to this area here, that wouldn't track very well because there's no contrast, it's all white. So areas like here where there's a clean contrasty edge, Areas like here where there's a clean contrasty edge or even this little dot could all work. Now we have two boxes on this tracker. Let me explain what these do. The crosshair should be placed exactly on the area or line that we want tracked. The inner box is the area of exact pixels that are going to be tracked. The outer box is kind of the search party, meaning that as it tracks, if it starts to lose it, this outer box is gonna help keep it in track. It's always gonna be on the lookout for those pixels leaving the inner box. So you have kind of the more accurate inner box and the more just in case outer box. Now we can change the size of these. And this would track this entire area. And while that may produce a decent track, the larger your tracking points, the longer the track is going to take because there's that many more pixels it has to pay attention to. So try to keep your boxes as small as possible, but within reason. You don't want to sit there and confine it because then it's going to have a really hard time staying on track. So I'm going to make this a little bigger than default. Right about there. And before I go any further, I generally like to do this with my playhead at zero. So drag your playhead to zero, and now our track point is out of line. Not a problem, just click it and drag it on that dot again. So we're gonna be tracking this dot. I'm gonna zoom out here. So let's go over to our tracker panel and see what our options are. We have our motion source, which is our track flower. Our current track is tracker one, which we see down here. We have a track type. We're working with transform. There are other options, but I'm worried about transform for now. Because we're working with transform, we have the three transform properties, position, rotation, and scale. By default, position is the only property checked. My camera isn't rotating, nor is it scaling. So we're gonna keep these unchecked. I'm only gonna wanna track position for this. Now below this, we have the motion target. We see edit target. If we click on edit target, the motion target dialog box pops up, but it gives us no options. The reason being is we only have one layer, so there's only one target we could have. I'm gonna hit cancel. Now as we track this data, we ultimately want to apply it, which we see grayed out down here. We want to apply it to a null object. That way we have an invisible controller that holds that tracking data so that way our future layers can all be parented to it, thereby sharing that tracking data. 
So let's create a brand new null object. Layer, new, null object. That creates null one. So now that we have another layer in our layer panel, we can come up to our edit target. And when we click on that, check it out. It already knows what we're trying to do. We want to apply this motion to null one. Go ahead and hit okay. So now our tracking point is set, our playhead's at zero, and our target is geared toward null one. Now we can analyze. To analyze, we have these four buttons. We can analyze backward or analyze forward, the reason why I have my playhead at zero is because I've never liked analyzing backwards because then you have to go forward again and sometimes there's overlap, I don't know. It always just seems so much cleaner to start at zero and then analyze forward. But we also have these outer buttons, analyze one frame forward or analyze one frame backward. This is if you wanted to really fine tune it and go frame by frame by frame to make sure that the data was precise. In this case, we're fine with just clicking the analyze forward play button. Do that now and watch it track. Pretty good, it adhered well. So let's zoom in and see what this did. So we can see now every single frame accounted for in position. And as I move my playhead, we can see that this is bouncing back and forth. Now there are some instances where it misses the target, especially when it's moving this fast and jagged. But don't worry, click on track flower in your layer panel and hit U on the keyboard. This brings up every keyframe for that tracker. Now if the tracker missed a certain point like it did here, all you have to do is have your playhead over those points and simply just move your tracker to where you want it to be and that resets that point. So there's a few of these here. Go right here, come down. Sometimes you have to go back and do a little bit of refining, but since it's frame by frame, you can generally get a gist of when that error happened. And that looks pretty good. So now that I've refined all of my data, and I like the track, we now want to apply this tracking data to the null object. So by default, nothing has technically happened here. We have to decide what happens next. Let's come up to our tracker panel and let's click on the apply button. And since we've already edited the target before, this is headed to null one. Now we want to apply the dimensions in both the X and Y axis because it's moving up and down and side to side. So go ahead and hit okay. That takes us back to our composition tab, and if I click on my null one hit U, we can see now that there are position keyframes that align with that track data. We no longer need to see the data on the track flower layer, so I'm just gonna select it and hit U to toggle it back up. So that's how we track specific points. We select track motion in the tracker panel, adjust the area of the track, and then analyze forward, applying it to a null object. So now we have null one with all of that position data. Well, what can we do now? Well, let's create something and then parent it to null one, thereby allowing it to share this track data. I'm gonna get out my text tool. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna type rainy day. Now, if I play this, the text layer is stationary, and the camera and the flower are moving, but the text is not. This is because we haven't done anything to tie our text layer to the null. Get out my selection tool. So what we wanna do is we want to parent the text layer to the null. So let's grab the pick whip on our rainy day text layer, and let's drag it to null one. By doing this, if I come back here, the text layer should now bounce just as much as that pedal. Excellent. And notice we didn't have to make this a 3D layer on the text. We're just applying the X and Y axis position. X and Y isn't 3D. X, Y, and Z is. So that's a big difference as well. As we start to look at our trackers, the track camera options are all 3D. 
but tracking motion doesn't necessarily have to be. By and large, if we're just tracking position data, it doesn't have to be a 3D layer. So this is how we track specific motion. This could be an airplane in the sky, a bird in the sky. This could be a specific logo maybe on someone's shirt that you're trying to get rid of. You can track things and then do whatever you want to them because you can parent anything else to that null object. So I could create anything else in here, shapes, more text, animated pre-compositions, and as long as they're parented to null one, they're gonna move just like the flower. So that's basic motion tracking using the track motion feature inside the tracker panel in After Effects.